Majorly clutch relationship advice from someone that has been married, divorced, and through about a million other things that I promise you do not want. So trust me because I've seen it all. If you ever, and I do mean ever, even for one second, even for one single second, one single minute, have to convince this person of your value and why you are worth their time, you run for the hills. As fast as you can away from this person because I promise you they are not it. And what percentage of divorces are filed by women? I don't understand why she said that this was relationship advice for someone who ended her marriage. I mean, it makes sense to give advice on relationships, right? Besides that, she's been looking for a date for a while. She's also been looking for a relationship for a while now, but hasn't been able to find one. Hey everyone, it's great to see you all again. Women instantly regret losing a good man and now all alone. Let's begin right away. Fellas, I'ma just tell you like this. Maybe it's not the women whose standards are too high. Maybe their standards are just where they need to be. Maybe sometimes y'all standards be too high because y'all be shooting for the baddest women, the women of your dreams, but you are nowhere where you need to be in your life. You have no resources. You stingy. Y'all be immature. And then you go shooting for a woman that you cannot maintain, that you cannot afford. And then you cannot stand to be rejected. So then y'all get on the internet crying every day, all day about what women want a man to do. You need to date within your bracket based off of how much you make, how you look and what you're willing to do instead of getting mad at what a certain type of woman or a particular woman wants from you that you cannot give. Go be with somebody or pursue somebody that will be with you. But y'all don't like that. Y'all don't know what y'all want. All y'all be knowing is that the woman that y'all want don't want y'all. I'm starting to think that this generation of women are a lot harder to play games on. They're a lot harder to manipulate and control. And it's harder to play on their emotions. So if you really not on nothing, most women nowadays, even the younger ones can sniff that out. So if you don't have no resources, if you're on that bull crap, if you don't want nothing serious, you're getting booted out the way. Because men are like buses. Y'all like the easiest thing to get. So I don't even know why y'all be sitting there trying to remind women that they're single as if you're insulting them. Then be like, we just want to hit. But you know, wanting to do something and actually being able to do it is two different things, brother. <laughs> y'all be having a hard time finessing women out their panties. So y'all be on the internet trolling women. Like, don't be commenting ignorant stuff on my post because you sexually frustrated. <laughs> And be super crazy and it be the ones that be playing music off they phone walking down the damn street rapping to they self creepy as hell and then be trying to hit on ig baddies and shit and be mad because they can't fly her out so all of a sudden they want to dog her out like boy please whatever then <laughs> or it be the real old ones that play games with women their entire life now they want a young woman to settle down with and you ain't got shit to offer then they talking about soft boy era like y'all niggas been soft y'all used to try to be in a popular niggas face so bad they used to treat the fuck out of y'all smack y'all upside the head and make y'all run to the corner store on your weak ass raggedy ass bike chain slipping and everything thirsty as hell like <laughs> y'all was always the ugliest weakest dude out of the group y'all used to try to impress women and bring them around your homeboys like you was just that nigga and shit and whole time we would peek like this nigga lame as hell like looking around homie fine as fuck and you corny as hell like watch out then <laughs> Then y'all talking about drizzle, drizzle. All that make me think of is that y'all dick nasty. Y'all know y'all don't go to the damn doctor. Like for real, a lot of y'all got drizzle, drizzle because y'all got chlamydia. Piss hot as hell. Talking about some drizzle, drizzle. That shit do not sound cool at all. Wow, that takes a lot of energy to say you're mad that some guys grew up and achieved their goals, but you're still stuck on your bike chain analogy from middle school. While people are talking about drizzle, drizzle, you're spreading bitterness around like it's a spice. If all you can remember is who was sent to the corner store or whose bike chain was slipping, it might be time to move on from playground drama. And if you're so focused on diagnosing other people, you might want to check your energy. It sounds like all you're catching out here is an attitude. She's being rude and has a problem with her attitude. This means she's totally ready for the soft guy era. She's also saying this now because the Tyrones are still using her. But wait until she's in her 30s or 40s to see if she still has the same speed. Oh my God, the date. <sighs> I had the worst anxiety yesterday after the date. I drank a little too much, but crazy story. 
So this guy wants to take me out. He's been trying to take me out for a year and I decide to give it a go. So we go to Bond Street and we sit down and we sit at the lounge, which is downstairs right by the door. We're sitting there and in walks in my date for Thursday. And it's him and all of his friends. And he had been texting me earlier to go to this club called Gospel later. And I told him like, yeah, maybe after my dinner, but I didn't say where my dinner was. So lo and behold, we're both at Bond Street. We lock eyes and he makes eye contact and he sits in a seat staring at me the entire time. And when he goes out to smoke a cigarette with his friends, he comes up to the table, gives me a hug, and my date just looks at me. And I'm like, oh yeah, like we're just friends. Like, you know, old New York friends. I go to the bathroom and as I open the stall, he's right there, cause it's co-ed bathrooms. And we have this like cheeky moment and I'm super attracted to him, but I'm also attracted to my current date. You'll all be glad to hear that she has a different date with a third guy tonight at the same restaurant. I guess she likes pretty much everyone except a nice lady, and it would be a waste of time and money to take her on a date. What was the relationship advice you gave before? Know how much you're worth. Okay, I'll try, but I just can't find any in her. I try very hard. So ladies, just remember, for every man that's out in the world that's like Mr. Drizzle Drizzle here, there are three times as many lesbians out there who are willing to do all the things that men like this aren't, plus so much more. You will be treated like a queen, okay? The only thing that this man is going to be drizzle drizzling into is his own hand because he clearly doesn't know how to treat a woman. I do. If you have a man like this and you're ready to be treated the way you deserve, call me because you will be. That's not how it works. You don't have any ding dongs, so you can only make another carpet licker happy. But I hope that because of MG Tao, these 304 start scamming these lesbos and take everything they're worth. When both of our enemies fight, it will be the funniest thing ever. Please do what she says and empty her bank account. I'm dating a broke guy and it really, really sucks because he has the best personality, hands down. I have so much fun with him. He does what he can when he can, but he doesn't do enough. Emails come on online and talk about like, look what he bought me. Look what he got me. Look at where he took me. It's like the ones that are dating the broke men. We don't talk about it. Imagine her man is just going through a hard time right now and she calls him out like this in public and then he sees the video because I think that he would question why this wasn't a conversation between the two of you versus the whole world. And if you had that conversation, you could either one, you realize that neither one of you want to compromise or change. So therefore you're not compatible and you could just respectfully move on. Or two, you make a plan that you're both happy with and you don't have to lose a great guy. She is really seeing a broke guy. She picked Chad or Tyrone because he seems to have the guy vibe, which is also called charm and charisma. That's what she has to do to be with that man. Have a good time with your partner, make sure you're heard, and work hard all day to keep him happy. Alternatively, stay home with a guy who makes her feel as dry as the Sahara Desert and think about cheating all the time. We are worth a certain amount of money. It is sad, but it is what it is. It's called being a man and living a life. I promised my wife that we would never have to worry about money because if you don't have any, you will never have a good job. You know she loves you. I've said it before, I'll say it again. You didn't screw up by showing too much interest. The right person would never be deterred by you showing interest. You can't screw up with the right person. They're just the wrong person. It is possible to mess up by being too interested, but there are many other ways to mess up with the right person. Having the thought that you can do almost anything and that he will stay because he is, quote, the right person. That's not how it works. Hey, y'all, I want to do a little quick story time. So a lot of y'all already know I moved back home to Atlanta, Georgia. Right now, I'm living in Buckhead, right? I wanted to move here because I feel like if I see a lot of people with a whole bunch of money, I'm going to want a whole bunch of money, right? So I went and got born so I can just feel fancy and stuff. I had on a nice little outfit and stuff. And this man had walked up to me, y'all. 
he was all right, but he was like caution. And I understand that my skin tone is a little caution, but I'm not really like into caution, man. I like chocolate, brown skin. Talk. <laughs> okay, I, I have had a man before, mind your business. No, you but haven't. Can I tell my story? The only man that you had was JJ. He's imaginary. You ain't never had a man a day in your life. I had a girl before you had a man. You're nine. Anyways, anyways, y'all, while he was trying to talk to me and stuff like that, I noticed like he had on some gray little sweatpants and stuff. I got to edit that part out. He had some gray um little shorts, sweat sweater shorts, and then a little tank top. And then he just kept saying drizzle, drizzle, like drizzle, drizzle. I'm like, what is drizzle, drizzle? Like, why you keep saying that? He said, you'll understand what drizzle, drizzle is if you had money. Her own child taught her. So far, it looks like MGTOW is ahead. Random women are starting to notice that men expect them to be soft-hearted. That's proof because she clearly wasn't interested in him, but saw him as an ATM, and he got away with it because she played the soft guy role. Otherwise, the person who was after gold would have taken his money. Also, for those who don't know, Buckhead is Atlanta's wealthy neighborhood. Nephew was ready for a roast. Okay, so it's her nephew. These thoughts make the guy act like a king already. If you like the show, click like to let other people know. You'll know when I add new pictures if you click the bell. Thanks for everything you've done. Do something right away. Again, click here to see more videos of people running into walls.